when you left the the successful business that you had built for so many years and decided to start from zero the internal part of you was very convinced so that is what you got to nurture and that is mainly because of two reasons as i said disconnected writing which moves to the left side so i'm very very sure that that inner dialogue is very important for you to nurture i do think is there a better word for mind blown oh. <laughs> it is incredible i uh, i i i don't find a word of uh, i'm just mind blown hi there welcome to absolutely right the very first graphology which means handwriting analysis based podcast show in india my name is aditi surana i am a graphologist a high performance coach and an anti anxiety expert On our show I get to do two of my favorite things. First, I get to analyze people and decode their personalities with the help of handwriting, something that is my hobby turned profession. And second, I get to introduce you to some amazing high performing individuals, entrepreneurs, leaders, people who have done offbeat things and have gone beyond their limitations, beyond their capacities only because they were resilient to do so. Now, every time we get to talk to them, we learn something about our own selves and the stories are definitely inspiring. Our guest on the show today is Tarun Sharma who is an engineer turned corporate employee turned startup employee turned an entrepreneur. Now his journey is very interesting and very relatable. In this conversation we speak about failures, lockdown, how he looked at his own journey and confusion and along with that we speak about multiple personality traits. Without further ado, let me invite Tarun in the conversation. Let's get started. Hi Tarun, welcome to Absolutely Right. I have read your story and I just introduce our listeners to your journey. Please tell us where all of this crazy stuff began. Hi Aditi, glad to be here. I am super super excited. This is a very unique format of 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 interaction I've seen in my last 10 years. Thank you. So, uh if I tell my journey in black and white as what it is, it is very confusing. It started from a confusion. I I never wanted to take up maths and become an engineer I was more interested in business as a classical family everybody told me to become an engineer right yeah come back and uh, I did uh, I I sat down for IIT J the, the examination by which you get into IITs I opted for a college which was uh, famous for mining mining and petroleum earth sciences okay. but in that college I took up electrical engineering <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, studied electrical engineering for for four years, and I realized I'm not a good electrical engineer. And then I opted for a technology job in HP, the laptop company. But you completed so, your engineering. Yes, I did. I okay, did. Okay. I had to. Okay. Uh, my father is strict, so <laughs> I, I had to. And then I took up a job in a technology company, and okay. that's where I realized I'm not a good technologist. <laughs> and I'm not good at working at this. And uh, there are amazing people around me, but I'm uh, I'm not doing it well. Then uh, post that I I joined uh, I I started something which was into crowdfunding. And I was okay. I was right from day one I was interested in building businesses. But you know at that part of my life I was very very inexperienced. I didn't know how the real world was. I jumped onto something and realized I am not made for this. And in just about six eight months I. I had we we had to shut it down because it was a very okay. complex business. We were very naive. We were young kids, and in that process, I met Boxit uh, founders and I joined Boxit as a head of growth. I was the first one to join. Okay. So you can see it. Uh, no maths, maths, engineering, uh, electrical, <laughs> technology, then food. Yeah. And technology then my, and food. Technology and then food. I mean, uh, uh, till that time, my father was uh, was thinking, "Isko kuch ho gaya." It's such a confused life, right? And right. Uh, for good three years, uh, we sold food. You must have heard of food. And in 2015, I realized that uh, I will begin again as as an entrepreneur. And I moved out of Boxer operationally and started in Gatim. And uh, my father is still confused. <laughs> after food, when the food was actually working after three years, why did it? Right. Move? and uh, so here we are i mean building and gaffin you can see this is a very confused journey but in that in this entire journey what i have realized is that if something is caring you and you are excited about it at the same time jump on it that that's something which kept me going for boxed or for the startup which we started and then wrapped it up and then for and gaffin 
so this is this is how my life has traveled for good 10 years and now uh, for for the past 5 years we have been building m caffeine m caffeine is india's first caffeinated personal care brand you were the first ones to uh, and the crazy ones to start caffeine revolution in india at that point of time uh, the haldi and tulsi still right. are big <laughs> and at that point of my uh, time my mother started becoming confused okay why when the revolution is of ayurveda why caffeine right and i was explaining her that you know uh, caffeine is one of the oldest propositions for skin care and hair care it goes back till 10th, 10th century there was a in persia there was a book called canon of medicine where use of caffeine for skin care and hair care was written for the first time mm. and so we were not the inventors of it we just realized that this is a great powerful ingredient which has not been explored across the globe and we should be right. the first ones to build it and what we what we are more excited about caffeine from uh, not just from the physiological aspects of its skin care and uh, hair care its psychological connect okay. had it been this meeting in a in an outside world set up in a non zoom world we would have ordered coffee we would of have course. shake green tea the world runs on caffeine so right. caffeine is a social connector as a brand you need to have a psychological connect and that's where we were really excited that there's this proposition which is great physiologically and great psychologically and at the same time we were we were deeply hurt and deeply disturbed by the way in the last two decades this this industry has done marketing i was i was really really happy when i read about the the movement that you have built against you know technically the when a business picks up an idea and starts believing that we're not going to sell the color as beauty and, no, and that is so liberating i was so happy and that was my exciting point to have you over why did you choose to go against the norms and finally we have a brand for indians where we don't have to look like someone else yeah it is not just about making good products can you make products which make the consumers feel good about themselves can you can you can you uh, can you get past this color bias and can you say that confidence is over color uh, and also and also what you said was insecurities which is very interesting you said oh i can also sell it i can make you feel confident but i will make you feel insecure about right, right now how you do yourself right. which personally for me is absolutely criminal if you put people down for where they are and and thank yes. you for not doing it yeah i mean now uh, as a business it's an easy path right to make fairness green yes yeah, it sells and uh, we we said when we used to tell our investors that we will never make a fairness green they used to uh, are you uh, are you that kind who no no we are not that kind we just don't want this to happen and our investors have been really supportive of mm -hmm. the kind of brand we are building it and we believe in the longer run uh, the right things will win so we are a gender neutral brand so people confuse it from unisex hmm. we call ourselves a gender neutral brand because okay. whenever the country or the world recognizes more gender apart from the two in the form we we have we would want to have that inclusivity and we would want not to say that you know we are a male x brand or for female for men for we are a gender neutral brand and we work on inclusivity uh, we are as clean level as possible we are vegan beta certified and at the end of the day we would never ever sell a fairness cream or an insecurity product thank you thank you so much for not doing it oh my god so so my sister is an actor and she is duskier than than what actors or female actors in india should look like yeah. and we have had these conversations over these years that how it is not okay for people to only consider color as as beauty so thank you for yeah. doing it now an interesting aspect when you look at it from the marketing of a brand what are the challenges when you don't follow a norm it takes time it yeah, i mean things can happen fast easy things can happen fast right uh, difficult things will take time and in during that time uh, what it takes uh, the hardest thing is to keep everyone on the right track because there will be an excited manager who would come why do we <laughs> just twist it like this right and you say no we don't twist it like this we just stay on the path however long it takes because at the end of the day we are we have chosen the path, chosen this path we have subscribed for this and it comes with immense amount of resilience to reach there so just put in that put in those efforts it will happen aaj 100 unit becho kal bech lenge million units but sell them right talk to your customers and keep on building on top of it uh, it takes time and it takes resilience and i'm glad our entire team 
uh, works with a very single agenda to be on that path, not to digress. And if somebody does, they, they make them. So that is so interesting from, uh, I would say, a confused teenager to a confused <laughs> college student to somebody who is confused employee. Now here wow. you are being resilient and clear and determined. And I think this is a perfect moment for me to bring in handwriting and find the reasons what makes you so determined about yourself and about your journey. So first thing when I look at your writing is, you know, we, we break our writing the way we look at handwriting into three parts people who have top part of the writing which is your l's and t's you know like those longer formations extended and tall these people are driven more intellectually every time we look at zones of writing we divide lowercase handwriting into three parts the top part where you see the loops in the letter l b d and all other tall letters basically representing activities of your mind of your brain of your thinking of your creativity Second is the middle zone. All the letters which are A, U, I, M, N, everything that falls in the middle section of the writing. Now, when you look at these strokes, they talk about not literally the stomach, but activities related to it, like roti, kapda, makan, everything that goes around on your day-to-day -day mundane level, all the routines that you got to follow, whether you like it or not. And the third part is the lower zone, where the loops of Y, G, J come down and create this lower zone. It talks about your execution, your physical activity, your sexual drives. So basically, handwriting covers your entire body. Now, if you break it carefully, you'll understand the importance the writer gives to these specific areas. When a writer has predominated upper zone, which means the loops, which are L, B, D, are very long or inflated, then that activity matters to this person a lot. Their life pretty much revolves around these areas. Their thinking is their essential aspect. People recognize them for the ideation, for problem solving. If somebody's middle zone is predominated, which means it takes a large portion of that division, then that person is really interested in doing the routine things, decorating their house, making sure that the food and you know those mundane activities are done with utmost attention. If somebody's lower zone is predominated, then the writer is very, very active when it comes to their sexual activities, their execution, anything to do with their physical movement. While hiring people or understanding your spouse or even understanding your child, you can apply all these principles and know what is their tendency, what is their natural tendency of behavior. Your handwriting is also fairly disconnected writing. So, you know, you do not make those cursive long words, you break them in between. That shows you're creative, you're intuitive and you're disorganized. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to put both of these things together, which means that you feel excited about new ideas which are creative, which absolutely do not have clear path to achieve. And that challenge by itself is exciting for you. Yeah. So if I have to decode and say what made you so confused then and what keeps you on path right now is when you were doing all these different things, you know, engineering and everything, you did not feel heard you did not feel that you were actually operating from that creative instinct whereas now that you've reached this business every day wow. you're operating from that creative instinct so you are not necessarily focused but you are so creatively inspired on daily basis that the whole whole journey all dots fit in to make this straight line but these are wow. dots which are falling in place where you feel so so connected so anything that you pick up, which is only driven by logic, which does not have this connection of intuitively knowing that this is what I want, you won't be able to sustain no matter how much money you make. Wow. Actually, you have, when you were narrating, there were flashes of me sometimes thinking with a drink on a Saturday night. But I'm not, I can't articulate and you just, and there were flashes. Okay, yes, I am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is, this Thank is you. Amazing. This is, <laughs> so, you know, this, what you said was so true. Like so many times we do not know what's exactly happening. We do yeah. not know how we think, but we know that I, I have a feeling, but I don't know exactly how I process it. So when someone yeah. else articulates that for you, next time when yeah. you think about it, you have a guideline more than anything yeah. else. So yeah. next time you'll get, oh, should I be technically this? I'm like, wait. 
what is my instinct and instinct by the way uh, i was reading the other day uh, some reports on neuroscience and how they keep looking at what is the gut feel exactly is it in your brain is it in your stomach where is it coming from so they said for an entrepreneur for a leader this instinct or intuitive feeling gut feeling mm -hmm. is a learned behavior so all the small things that you have seen the gaps that you have observed you have spoken to your customer so you're gathering all that data you're not necessarily sitting and processing it but when you're thrown oh. into a situation all of that gets activated and then you know what oh. to do so this is a learned behavior so does that mean you can over time strengthen your instinct yes. if it is not yes and if i if i close my doors towards learning new things or learning from people learning from my instinct will go Get down down down, down. Oh, they will go down and also if you keep exposing yourself like the easiest way to do this is if it matters to you keep a decision making journal if you're working on that particular thing and i would suggest that for you i know it's a little early in our conversation to suggest something but i think it's, it's really important if you start observing your decision making patterns because for you they are in the moment they appear to be erratic for other people so if you start creating your own pattern and start decoding what exactly do i do when i go through this and i think that's applicable to all our listeners we land up making decisions sometimes we get influenced by friends sometimes family members we don't know how we process information to come to the conclusions that we do if we start observing that if we start kind of tracking it we will find a pattern and once you know your pattern you can either strengthen it you can break it you can upgrade it you can do a lot with it but we are not taught to look at it like for for marketing we look at data right for right. any decision we're like oh what what's the data saying what was my past performance like why not for our emotions why not for our decisions and th this is true for our personal life as well exactly exactly wonderful wonderful thank you the so second much. most welcome the the second point that comes to my mind is when you write your signature you write a capital letter t and then you scratch that beautifully with the capital letter s which is for sharma now for anybody who has overlapping in the signature it talks about they are one self critical second they constantly try to adjust themselves to fit into the family structure other things you can revolutionize but when it comes to your family you're like oh, no they are my priority and i can compromise sacrifice anything but that is something that is not always healthy because it sounds like a great family value but at the same time if you're doing it at the cost of criticizing yourself trying to cut cut yourself to fit into the box it gets to you so personal spaces can become difficult especially because you're trying to adjust and fit in in everybody and that that is a challenge according to me you would not believe last week my wife told me that you're always so critical about yourself kyu and sometimes you just cross cross the path of over criticizing yourself and i just made up something saying that you know it keeps me humble and she was like ha ah, theek hai kana kana <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yeah. and uh, it is bad or it is not right because you're constantly kind of you know pushing yourself to adjust by self criticizing yourself yes so, yes exactly okay. and when we do that you know self criticism is driven by if i have to describe it for our listeners and our viewers it's a self dialogue that that turns against us every time you want to do something you know imagine you have an instinct and you don't have the critical voice in your mind okay yeah. some criticism or some resistance is required because you want to move forward and you want to make sure that you are practical about things but the one which i am referring to is personal personally critical it says yeah. things like do you think you'll be able to do it and yeah. you have done it and you have done so many things but that voice when it turns against and it starts questioning doubting pushing you down you have to first fight that inner battle then come on the starting point and then begin so all the time that you spend moving forward and coming to the zero point from which you will begin is where the the enthusiasm uh, reduces you feel less inspired to do the same thing that you were so convinced about now these are the mechanisms that are built for whatever reasons we pick it up and we you know have these emotional baggages and we constantly peg ourselves to those negative outcomes than the positive outcomes this is where 
where we require to definitely look at things. Got it. Got it. And are there any ways and means from if you're at this stage and you come to zero? Are there any ways and means which which you would want to suggest to kind of come to a zero level? So in- many things actually here. Uh, first of all, if you find that pattern in your writing, you got to look at where do I criticize myself? You know, that self-awareness, because there is always a pattern. If it is in the handwriting, handwriting, if it shows in the writing, it means the pattern is so well established that your body has accepted it. And now it is, it is coming out off through your writing without your knowledge. Because you don't know you're doing this. Obviously, you did it because it looks stylish and you made a choice of the signature because you thought, you know, I think this is cool. But out of 50,000 other options, you chose this as your cool and continue to practice it. Talks about your subconscious choice. Okay, that's why it is accurate. And I can be so confident. Okay, let me tell you this, though I haven't never met you. Like, let me just say and begin here. Because it works like this. It is like the physical representation of your emotions. So... So find the pattern so that, as I said, you can twist them, upgrade them, change them. That's first. Second thing, we can use graphology or handwriting to change certain things. Not everything, but large degree of our behaviors can be altered when we practice things and repetitively practice it. So I always tell people, if you have this, this trait, just removing the handwriting won't change it completely because we have to go Mm -hmm. deeper and understand where it comes from. And mm-hmm. also give you ways to not feel the same way. So it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a very beautiful process if you look at it. Very yes. few people are aware of it. Mm-hmm. And we feel, how, how can this be possible? But it is right. not possible because it is a quick fix. It is possible because mind and body has a correlation. So mm-hmm. when you do yoga practice or any workout for that matter, when you move your body, your mind follows it. Similarly, handwriting is a movement. When you move your hand in a particular manner, your mind follows it for it to see newer personality changes. Wow. It is incredible to listen to this. <laughs> that, you know, that, that moment when you said that, you know, your physical action, how, you're writing something and how it is getting manifested because it is, it is a physical action. I mean, after 30, in 33 years, I never realized that this is, <laughs> It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So Tarun, over to you. Please ask me any question you think we can explore. If you think we can step into an area where I can, you know, as a high performance coach can help Thank you. We can, you know, take your journey to the next level. I'm game. I, I have a lot of them, but I will, I will structure them <laughs> and try to structure them. Uh, you talk about a lot of things where, you know, how does the mind work? How how we have been shaping ourselves and the trend and the behavior, right? I think there are, uh, so in mathematics, there's a sine curve, right? So if we are at top or the bottom of the sine curve, be the most happiest moment or the most lowest moment, these are the points which defines whether you would stay on that curve or you will come back, right? Uh, um, I've been kind of pushing myself by telling myself that, you know, complacency, arrogance will hit you someday. Ek din jab business bada banega aur baat hai, you would say, Hi, I am a I have arrived. Right? <laughs> ah, Abhi, I know it all. Right? <laughs> How do I come from that and become, and come back from that? Because that that's going to happen. Someday, some, someday it will hit. And then there is a phase where uh, the neg- negative part of the uh, uh, sign curve where I'll be the, I will be at the lowest and it would be very, very difficult for me to pull myself up. And beach ki kahani, I think it is well manageable. But in these two extreme points, how do you come out of it? You know, I'm, I'm surprised and I'm very happy that you're asking the question about being on the top. Mostly people only ask about being at the bottom at the lowest point. But that's amazing that you do observe yourself going on that journey. You have your writing that goes to the left side okay that means you are an introvert that means you are a person who requires to internalize certain things because you speak so well people consider you as a talkative person but you do that when you are uh, socializing you do that when you have to convey a message so you have learned how to speak but your fundamental mechanism is to internalize concepts and think through them 
okay so for you it is very important to differentiate that this is my public behavior and this is how i function this is how i behave and this is who i am so when you start okay. differentiating between the two the the happiest moments or the lowest moments are not for you for the gallery it is not when other people are clapping for you is where you sit down and you know that you have achieved what you were thought what are you wow. thinking of wow and if that internal person and i'm going to use the word critique here because your critique is very active when that critique is is satisfied is where you feel okay this is what i have done okay i think i added a good thing and even if people are not agreeing with you when you moved out of your job the the inner part of you was very clear that this is a thing to do when you left the the successful business that you had built for so many years and decided to start from zero the internal part of you was very convinced so that is what you got to nurture and that is mainly because of two reasons as i said disconnected writing which moves to the left side so i'm very very sure that that inner dialogue is very important for you to nurture i do think is there a better word for mind blown oh. <laughs> it is it is incredible i i i i, I don't find a word of uh, I'm just mind blown. Thank you. Thank you. And is it because my handwriting is still tipped towards left? It That's is not because of that. See, this is a representation. So your handwriting is like your mirror image. I'm reading the mirror image and saying, okay, because the the image shows this, these are the reasons. So you go to work on it. It is not because your writing is moving to the left. We have this concern or this strength. I'm rather saying that because you have the strength, which you have practiced over these years. your writing is representing it so i am reading the representation i'm analyzing that that uh, mirror image but that talks about it's like reading an x-ray like yeah. because of the x-ray we don't have the the broken bone because we have mm-hmm. a broken bone the x-ray shows it that, and then we can work wow. on it brilliant i i've got this new thing now i uh, i've got this new goal uh, human psychology excites me humor excites me yeah. and the way uh, i'm i'm listening to you mujhe lagta tha pichle wale mein yeah i think it's a zyada kya hoga but the moment you said <laughs> because everything uh, it, it is true it is it is hands down true and you have given me one more goal that i will learn this i will oh please this. we this. would love to have you over. i i i think i think this is so amazing because i feel when leaders understand people when they can see their strengths and weaknesses is where you can start twisting it this where you can create an environment where they can become better at what they they require to be better at and my yeah. personal struggle you know i work with corporates and leaders and all of that but i personally feel like how you don't want to support insecurities i don't want to support fear based uh, evaluation i feel mm. every single person has a right to be every mm. single imperfect person has a right to grow in a corporate ladder and become who they are now in order to do that you have to accept yourself for who you are if you yeah. don't begin the journey by accepting yourself you cannot take the journey ahead and how right. do you accept yourself without knowing who you are right Right. This is where the the biggest challenge lies. So yeah. I sincerely believe this should be a part of the curriculum leaders go through because it makes you a better leader at the end of the day. It's completely, so, completely, and better person. Even if you're not a yeah. leader, and if you are, you know, like anybody for that matter, I feel the self awareness is is irreplaceable. Yeah. In whichever way you look at it, whichever option, whichever career path. Over to you. Next question. Awesome. So, uh, my next question is more tilted towards the organization building or leadership building. We believe that you know why why do we kind of care for humor more because it kind of disarms a lot of difficult situations, right? Somebody is really troubled. He adds nature, he adds nature, right? And you just go to them and. No, no. Pause. Are... Let's let's also say this that you are personally interested in stand up comedy. Yes, I am personally. <laughs> Some day, somebody will have to bear me on the screen. <laughs> and I'm um, not saying this because your handwriting says that. Because we were talking about it before yeah. we started recording, so I know that yeah. from that reference. I'm extremely interested uh, in in stand up, and abhi ke liye the steam only goes through the stuff. <laughs> Some day it will be on the internet. So uh, I think uh, 
इन डिफिकल्ट सिचुएशन यू गो बैक टू द टीम एंड से अरे कितने का आ रहा है फोर का है एंड परेशान क्यों है फोर का है कल फाइव का तो मैंने मैंने जब रन करता था ना तो थ्री का था यू जस्ट डिसम इट बाई अर जोक बाई अर सिचुएशन बाई टेकिंग इट ऑन यू बाई टेकिंग यू जस्ट डिसम इट बिकॉज दैट दैट कीप्स पीपल थिंग बिकॉज दिस पीयर प्रेशर सोशल प्रेशर सोशल मीडिया गिवन मोर प्रेशर टू परफॉर्म देन देन इट वाज बिफोर कंप्लीटली अमंगस्ट ऑल दीज थिंग्स वी थिंक मेंटल वेलबींग शुड बी वन ऑफ द थिंग्स व्हिच वी आर वर्किंग ऑन वी हैव नॉट एज्ड इट वी वी आर ट्राइंग टू वर्क ऑन इट इट्स जस्ट दैट दिस इज सच अ डेलिकेट एंड सच एन अनएक्सप्लोर्ड डिवीजन सो टू से और अ थॉट सो टू से Uh, that nobody, uh, I, I can't take yarn from a lot of people who would have built, let's say, HR policies. I can't take it. But mental well-being, me, kami nahi hua hai. We believe uh, it is very imperative for us to build this, and humor is one part of it. But now, in this context, we would want to build organization which is sensitive, yet performing. Because uh, I mean, if somebody is working with us, we believe they are adults. and we will treat them like one but uh, at the same time we would not want to have an an outlier which kind of make sure that is being exploited exploited for so hence it is a very mature discussion which you want to have wherein we would want to have a very sensitive organization and not just for i mean mental well being is you know physiological social and then um, uh, so biological social and uh, psychological that's how it that's right. how the the circle works wellness true now uh, how do we build that because uh, we have been try- we have been try- uh, we have been talking about it for a year we have implemented a couple of things um, uh, acute measures like uh, hire a psychologist hire a uh, employee assistant program tie up with this that doesn't help first you need to kind of sensitize the market that it's okay i am i have anxiety issues i need to talk about it. but uh, when you build about build this thing in an organization such sensitive and delicate thing and yet you would want to kind of perform the business goal how should we start if not complete how should we start so the way people look at mental health you know it is either you are absolutely functional or you are absolutely hmm. non functional correct we are not there we are functionally broken people wake up they come to offices they do everything they're supposed to do but they are broken so we definitely require to to make being broken as a normal thing okay when when you talk about being broken when you share stories and as a leader when when some somebody is going through it the way you approach the situation sets definitely the culture culture is not something that would happen when you write things on on billboards it happens when you show them in action so when you talk about your anxiety your emotional conflicts and you say okay there was an emotional conflict and and probably i felt how you say we use humor similarly we we use vulnerability as a way to showcase that it is okay to be vulnerable it's okay, okay to say that i had this concern and in spite of it or because of it and you know with along with it these were my choices so when you how we teach marketing to anybody when somebody makes a mistake there you kind of showcase you say okay you did you oh that was wrong let's do this these are the three options you had next time try this so when you come to this conflicting point use one of these options and see what works for you similarly we got to create that that uh, i would say guideline that book of multiple choices that people can go through if they want to take a break is it okay mm. for your organization if they want to yeah. call in mentally sick is it okay for your organization so these are the choices every organization has to make how many we can give sick leaves which are physical illness can yeah. we also take uh, mental not feeling that good kind of breaks from work is it possible now these are the choices every organization will make secondly when people are going through something like this and if you spot it if your your team spots yeah. it how do you approach it what kind of environment do you create for that person to recover and resume i think Got that it. is extremely important and Got as a it. policy it is easy to do where you have a counselor this and that but i feel for an organization like yours where you are still so close 
to to people you work with it comes from top down so when you empathize when you genuinely learn the skill sets to deal with people's emotional challenges is where the help happens you cannot pretend to do this like when when i teach graphology we have this this module on listening skills and most of the time people are like oh listening skills are about eye contact and nodding and this and that body language i i don't believe in that i feel listening skills are about you being interested in the other person if you are interested your body your mind everything will be so glued because you're interested then you don't have to pretend you don't have to be tactical about it it's like heart to heart connection yeah. when that connection yeah. happens we forget everything else we don't look at yeah. our phones so you don't have yeah. to teach people how to not look at the phone when you're talking to somebody important if Got you it. you can cultivate a culture of being interested in the other person correct right so thank you so much i think uh, i think you rightly put it it has to start from the top and uh, uh, the first step is to start the conversation around it i think the first step tarun is to accept yourself when you do that to yourself when you look at your own imperfections and you look at your own you know invulnerabilities and start being okay with it and you know how you are trying to hide your emotions and if you start observing that you'll know what other people are doing because they're doing the same thing we're not right. we're not different as we think we are we are very similar to one another we might have smaller differentiation in our personality but at the core of it you and i would feel emotions in similar manners so if i connect to myself it is always easier for me to connect with you but if i don't connect with myself and if i'm hiding certain things and if i don't want to if i feel ashamed of my pains and my hurts then i will do the same with you unknowingly i think the first step is okay absolutely absolutely thank you thank you for correcting me i thought the first yes and uh, ha huh, and there's a lot of work which we need to do kind of in that area got it i have the last one which is yes please uh, the, i mean the basic one how can we learn graphology and 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 kind of and I, i'm not asking from a from a hobby perspective i'm genuinely genuinely interested now and uh, we are five partners to the brand i am the most useless one the other four kind of run the show <laughs> so i'm going to go back to them that ye kar rahe hain apan and <laughs> let's let's try to build ourselves better in, in that so how can we learn first thing is we do uh, graphology master classes we do it for okay. corporates we do it for individuals so that's like you know if the entire team not only looks at handwriting but i think moreover accepts as i'm constantly repeating this you know they look at the flaw and they start seeing what where is it coming from that gives you a toolbox and today we have google we have so many books we have so many resources yeah. available once you yeah. know this is my problem like i don't think i have to remind you tomorrow oh tarun you got to look at these three things now you just got aware yeah. and now that thing yeah. can stop you from resolving it that's that's the human spirit but yeah. because we do not know we keep dealing with problems that we we think are our problems so that mm. clear mirror is where the the courses are designed that's the first thing second thing is to use very strong interventions where we can talk to leaders and change things for them by that intense coaching approach now what we did in a way in today's conversation yeah. i did yeah. not mince my words i walked into it and i spoke about things where where it really can shift change alter and this is in a way a coaching session so we we do yeah, that because is. we want people to look at the implementation of this beautiful subject it is not only like okay i can tell you this is true once you know the real problem and you use the right tools you move to the next level and i think that's incredible and this is where we use graphology at the second level third obviously yeah, as you said we really wish people start being aware and for yeah. that we we use things like journaling we use things like graphotherapy that anybody and everybody even if they don't sit and analyze themselves they can absolutely implement it on a daily basis so we do that work through graphotherapy so so many ways. i will personally make sure that at least people around me get to know i, I didn't know about it a sure. lot of people don't know about it and this is the most incredible conversation i've had in a lot of time thank uh, you in a very long time i mean uh, uh, post pandemic we're just chatting with people right we don't have anything work from home and we, we but uh, it, it it is incredible and i'm going to i will we will personally make sure that how how we will learn it and we will kind of spread the word for sure thank you 
<laughs> so Darun, I, I was going through one of your interviews and during the pandemic, you decided to increase the size of your warehouse three times. Yeah. Right. How did you make that decision? Because, you know, everybody was like going very, very stringent with their the resources that like, okay, let's kind of survive this. Why would you choose to expand at that point? When pandemic hit us, the first priority for us was we need to preserve our human capital. So no layoffs, no salary reductions. Uh, the increments would be done as it is. Uh, bonuses will be released as it is. Our people will never feel that we are they are affected. We kind of said it out loud. So when that first primary objective was done, the second objective was that how do we prepare ourselves when when we come out in a relatively better world? Because you know, as a business, we, the last thing we would want to know is that in the moment of extreme uncertainty, not just for you, uh, for the entire world, uh, uh, you could not think of ten ways of coming out of it. Nobody knew the answer. Right. But uh, when we are building our uh, our own brand, we are uncertain about a lot. Of but when pandemic hit us, everybody was uncertain about the future, and uh, there was enough chatter about how it will continue for 24 months, 2022, blah, blah. But we believe that there will be a time where things will open up because it's a shocker. The shocker needs to be absorbed. Jab the world will open, are we prepared? And the first question uh, was, we need to kind of strengthen our supply chain because then if the world opens, it, it's as good as saying that, you know, there's this gate pay, there is this enough janta for the concert, right? right? Bend this the will happen. Door. Yeah, yeah. The door will open, but are you capable enough to give them the seating? So that's the thought. Uh, so the after human capital, we just jump back to saying that you know let's strengthen our supply chain because we, we have we have domestic supply chain. We don't procure anything from outside. Uh, okay. So it was fairly simple. Uh, in the broken systems, we said that eight This will give us enough leeway for us to accommodate any kind of demand which will come after the floodgates open, right? Mm-hmm. And it, was, it, it was a very strategic call which we took, um, uh, but it was a priority because we believed, ke, I think this was the time when, uh, you know, we used to say that uh, we are a scrappy starter, we are a challenger brand. One day we will, uh, we will, we will achieve those sales with these larger conglomerates too. April was that one, they were zero, we were zero. So we set up with dinner. <laughs> that we are on the same page. Yeah, <laughs> we have arrived. Right. <laughs> and uh, now we are equal. Now it is dependent on how fast we move. And people said, you're finding a joke. In this. <laughs> yes, that's how we operate. Now we will prepare ourselves better for the run. So that's, that's the decision we took. But we took it very strategically. So what was your biggest learning through this pandemic months? Uh, survival. I mean, uh, it, it, uh, it sounds cliched, but uh, it was personal. It was uh, uh, professional. You had a, we, we had a lot of responsibilities uh, across the board. But I think uh, coming out of it with a with a let's say head high was was the survival definition for us. And it taught a lot of things. I think uh, we were on a roll 2019 to 20. Uh, in 12 months, we grew 16x. So we wow. were we were kind of we were on a very different trajectory. And you know, building a brand around caffeine. Um, and again, the joke is when we go out there, uh, people say we ask them, the, "What's your second question?" So they get they generally get confused. With, you know, I haven't asked the first one. I know it's caffeine. Why caffeine? <laughs> Only caffeine. Kitna bada hoga. And um, uh, we grew when 16x, I mean, uh, we got the attention, we, we were growing, we were feeling happy about things. Uh, but suddenly that shocker and every, everything became zero. We were five years behind, we are four years behind, right? The the only learning which I got after a long-term assessment is that uh, things can happen anytime, you just need to survive. I mean, Rocky may have a line, you know, I mean, it is not about how hard you punch. It is about how hard you can get punched and still stand wow. so that's that's the crux of what we learned from pandemic and it has made us more humble uh, it has made us more humble okay, this can happen anything can happen and you just need to survive with a head eye 
you can survive you can survive. you can crawl but you need to have your head high so there would be to talk to new entrepreneurs and so many people during the pandemic thought of starting their own businesses and they said you know side hustles yeah. turning you know becoming bigger or at least having those aspirations and you have gone through that journey if you have to give like these three or four ways for them to evaluate certain things before they start their business or or things that sh- they should believe in and jump in with both feet what could be those three or four things you would say god uh, i think first is i mean again it's spoken about a lot of times but customer centricity is still an understated thing uh, at least in brands actual customer centricity is not getting the solution and verbatim from customers it is understanding them well uh, if you if you would have asked that whether you want a coffee brand people said why yeah why do i care uh, you need to go three steps beyond that and understand what is the behavior when we talk to our customers we just don't talk about uh, products we talk about how much time they spend on let's say reels for that matter mm-hmm. what what is the family background not to understand the sec a or sec mm-hmm. b values kya hai because at the end of the day we are on internet if i'm trying to find one of these in mumbai and one of these in let's say muzaffarnagar internet knows both of these the same it's just that they are on different pin codes right why they are same is a function of a lot of things around them not just uh, i'm interested in football you're interested in football that industry that's not how internet is mm-hmm. it is around the behavior it is about the scrolling it is about the browsing and that's a function of people around you now i'm going to search a lot about graphology because i have people around so knowing the environment also helps kya aap shaam mein kab karte hain jaise one of the that trickiest question we used to ask our customers aap ghar pe wapas kab aate hain that tells a lot of uh, things for a small town for a mid town tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 the so moment you get a sharp data point around it you know if somebody is coming back at 7 o'clock in gwalior they will have an outburst of showing that they are millennial 11 baje hrc se aa rahe ho if you are coming from a social you are out there you have done that now your browse browsing is only to things which the last mile thing you have arrived your friends you have done that but agar 7 baje 8 baje koi gwalior mein aa raha hai there will be an outburst on internet to show that i am like that person only because i can see his life or her life and that's mm-hmm. where the consumerism will rise that's what we talk mm-hmm. and bada odd ho jata tha ki you just ask me what face wash i use no why are you asking when what do type? i come back yeah i was a bug but parents come kya but uh, it gives a lot of so customer centricity mm-hmm. is is not just on that stuff it is it is much more deeper so that's first for us we still try to practice it second uh, is things take time things will take time uh, if you thought that you know i've cracked the code this is the paper plan i will reach there it's not gonna happen that's something we don't should write it on a paper keep it under the pillow whenever you wake up just read it because agar aisa hota to i mean uh, resilience <laughs> persistence jaisi cheeze nahi hoti uske uske zarurat nahi hoti we we would have survived without but the fit bahut hi cool aur life easy ho jati right but uh, that doesn't happen uh, we call we, we always say this brands are not app downloads uh, brands take time mm-hmm. it is something which you are applying consuming give consumers the time to absorb the brand don't just have it around uh, things take time be resistant uh, be, uh, be persistent about persistent about what how you're building it and commit to it if somebody wants to get into a startup zone and bring him in an entrepreneur and see acha usne utna million uthaya tha abhi uh, itna main uthaunga itna exit ho jayega i'll be a crorepati you'll be crorepati in the first round even if you raise 50 lakhs you'll be a crorepati because you own 80% your valuation is let's say 4 crores you're a crore hmm. nahi farak padega kisi ko it, it, it is not real right valuations are perceived realities of business uh, so things will take time commit to that Uh, that is fundamental i uh, i very actively angel invest and that's the fundamental problem which i have uh, with a lot of people that 
सर ये राउंड ये राउंड ये राउंड तीन साल में बन गया सौ करोड़ मैंने तो फिर मैं पांच साल से तो मेरा बहुत मतलब आई एम जस्ट वेस्टिंग आई थिंक टेक टाइम राइट यू हैव टू कमिट टू इट एंड थर्ड इज यू विल हैव टू बिल्ड द मोस्ट किकैट टीम अराउंड यू इट के नॉट हैपन विद अ लॉट ऑफ दैट कोफाउंडर सीईओ एटीट्यूड काइंड ऑफ कम्स इन दैट यू नो जब निकला था तो अकेला निकला था मैं ही बना लूँ इट विल नॉट हैपन वी आर ब्लेस्ड वी आर सीन वेरी लिटिल एट्रीशन एंड एम क्या सीन वी आर ब्लेस्ड दैट वी स्टार्टेड विथ लेट से फाइव पार्टनर्स और फाइव ऑन्टरप्रनोर्स एंड नाउ फिर प्रॉब्लम यूड है इन द सिस्टम सो बिल्ड दैट डीप रूटेड टीम एंड इट विल इट विल बी बिल्ड ओनली इफ यू हैव वेरी क्लियर कल्चर को डिफाइंड यू कॉन्ट यू कॉन्ट बिल्ड यू you can build large uh, teams on machines but if you have to build large enduring organizations it has to be built on people and people will be served with culture to build that culture so that's amazing 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 thank you so much tarun this is wonderful i think there are so many takeaways for us to think about so many moments where people can evaluate themselves i think this conversation was really really interesting and i wish you all the best for all the future things that you would be picking up and all the ideas that you would be running and flying with thank you so much aditi and i will again reiterate i i generally that kind mujhe bhi acha lagta hai dono chat par i have loved this conversation i you can't believe jab aap bata rahe the you when we when you were telling about me the small trip it was it was it was more like looking at the mirror and now accepting it and i the very first thing i will try to do is kept myself but this has been a great conversation and uh, my takeaway is that i will start learning graphology yeah. sure. can't wait to have you in our next batch and and, and have the whole start. conversation I, i will i will reach out to you for that pakke thank you thank wonderful you so conversation much. thank you so much thanks abhiti bye Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Absolutely Right podcast. Please tell me which were your favorite part. What did you like? What was your takeaway? My email ID is right w r i t e at aditi surana dot com. Are you as fascinated as Tarun was about learning graphology? Then you can join our graphology masterclass. You can check out all the details about the masterclass and all the sessions that we do on aditi surana dot com. When we use graphology in an organizational improvement, we work with leaders, we work with employees, we do sessions which are about graphology and anti-anxiety concepts. So if your organization is going through something like that, please reach out. We would love to work with you. If you haven't liked or subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so because you will learn some interesting aspects about yourself every week through these powerful conversations. I will see you on Friday with one more episode of the Absolutely Right podcast. Till then. Happy writing.